Lincoln believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. Today, I am so excited. I'm here with Hala Taha, Young and Profiting Media. She is the proclaimed podcast princess. I don't think you coined that. I think someone coined you the podcast princess. Is that correct? Yes, podcast magazine. See, that's even better. It's like, you know, you can say I'm the podcast princess, but when someone else calls you, it it makes it official. So that's really good. And so you've been doing this for a while, and you also you've done a lot. So let's start at the beginning. So born in Jersey, yep. Doctor dad, yep. Um, and they all wanted you to be doctor. Instead, you went and had too much fun in college. I listened to her keynote at the MIT event on her podcast right before the show. So I got the background here. Had too much fun in college. <laughs> then get some real world experience at. What was it, Hot 91 or Hot 97. Hot 97 97. in New York. Yeah. Really really cut your teeth there, Mm -hmm. say the least. And then left there, got an MBA, went into the corporate world. I mean, you worked for HP. They're such a great company. Yeah. I loved it there. That's awesome. And then and then you left there and you and that's when you started Yap, right? I did. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about Yap. Like what's the whole premise of Yap? Okay, cool. Well, yeah, Yap is called Young and Profiting. So I have a podcast. That's how I started this whole media empire. It started all with the podcast about four years ago. That really took off two years into it. Two years ago, I started Yap Media Agency. It's a social media and podcast agency. I'm like a social media guru, right? Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. one of the biggest influencers on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And based off the, the success of my podcast, off my LinkedIn profile, I started getting asked the same question. People would come on my show, the guests of my show, and they'd be CEOs, celebrities, best-selling yeah. authors. And at the end of it, they'd be like, so Hala, I see you crushing on LinkedIn. I see you have this amazing podcast. How did you do it? Do you have a team? Can you do this for me? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was working corporate and I would just kind of be like, you know, no, I can't help you. I've just got a volunteer team, interns. It's just me. We're not making any money. I have a real job and this is my hobby. This is how I give back. So many people ask me that, that after a certain point, I was like, all right, I'm just going to give this a shot. I started paying my signs. volunteers. Yeah. You saw I, this. I mean, when Heather Monahan says, you're doing it for me, and you're like, uh, 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 okay, sure. Yeah, Heather Monahan was my first client, and she basically started stalking me and messaging <laughs> me it. on all of my posts on LinkedIn, and she'd be like, Holla, I need you to do my videos. Holla, I need you to do my videos. Meanwhile, she was like, twice as big as me on LinkedIn. So it was like a big deal that she was reaching out to me because she was a way bigger influencer. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll I'll start doing your stuff and her credibility and and just leverage that and then started charging a lot higher ticket. And one thing led to another. Now we're 60 employees, you know, made over $4 million in revenue in the past less than two years, um, running accounts like Kara Golden, CEO of Hintwater, the CEO of 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I do all his stuff. Oh, I love Brian Scudamore. Yeah. So 
it's it's a great company that we've built and I also just launched a podcast network. So Ooh. not only do I have a social and podcast agency, but now I grow and monetize podcasts in the business and self improvement space and that's going really well. I have some big announcements coming soon. Ooh, I can't wait to share. Scoops, any- I'm signing exclusive uh, by the end of the month and I'm ninety nine percent on sh- who I'm gonna be signing with and it's it's really freaking excited. We're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and get right back to the show. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2B brilliant, B2B bold, and B2B breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose-built to make B2B marketing mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer's journey while building your brand. A platform with trusted data and lead generation you need to beat your KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always seen by those who matter. So let's get ready to be too boldly go where no marketer has gone before because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything you can be. Rethink your B2B marketing ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. That's great. So... To go back a little bit, so 2020 was, was that was two years ago. Sorry, it's a big blur, right? It's a big blur right now with the pandemic and all that. Was a crazy year for you. You lost your father mm-hmm. to to COVID, which is oh, ugh. I mean, I lost people to COVID too, and but then you also crushed it with the business yeah. and things exploded. So you know that must have been a real roller coaster of emotions and of you know just everything and then you get out here and you're crushing it on linkedin you're all over twitter you're over it's, I, I, do you sleep really is the kind of thing i've got a great team <laughs> you, have, you have a good team of people and all that what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur the best thing about being an entrepreneur flexibility yes. i mean mm-hmm. i look at my life now and by the way i delayed gratification for so long like i worked really really hard to get to where i'm at so yeah. even before i started the podcast i was hustling right i used mm-hmm. to work at a radio station i worked for free at a radio station That's for crazy. three years I went and got my MBA and while I was getting my MBA, I worked at Hewlett Packard. So like I've always done like two things at a time, you know, like never just like one job. Yeah. And then I started the podcast four years ago while in corporate. So I was side hustling with this hobby. (sighs) Then two years later, on top of that side hustle, this was in 2020 when my dad was in the hospital with COVID, I started the agency. So I was working a corporate job at Disney. I was running my number one podcast, which was already big at this time like my yeah. podcast was already huge running my linkedin account and you know linkedin account wasn't a job but still it, it kind of was like a part-time job yeah, it I spent a that. lot of time on it and then i had my agency so i was working 16 to 18 hour wow. days i was oh. working very hard for many many years like at least four years 16 18 hour days every single weekend you know my re- people don't see this they see the start where you're kind of scrappy and all that stuff they see the success and you don't see, see what the- sweat and tears that go into it like it's a lot yeah and so for four years i didn't have a lot of fun uh i delayed gratification completely i barely did anything on the weekends i didn't travel all i cared about was yap growing yap growing my team growing my brand but now it's fun in its own right but it's different kind of fun it was a different i did enjoy it that's why i was so driven and passionate even Mm -hmm. in the first two years when there was very stagnant progress or very Mm -hmm. slow progress but then things took off and it was very exciting right yeah and I say all this because now I'm chilling. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like I work maybe four or five hours a day and get to do interviews like this, get to go get my hair done, go get a massage. I get to buy whatever I want, go shopping. I just feel like I really have a life of flexibility. Yeah, have worked for it and people don't see that a lot of times. And it's hard, especially with social media, they see the success. They see like your clip reel when you click on your avatar and also the music blares and it's holla everywhere you know doing fun stuff and it's like wow but it's like there's four years where you weren't doing that stuff you're literally sitting down at the computer pumping out 
you know, content. I have like neck problems because I was on the computer so much. Like I it's like call a standing re- desk. <laughs> I really, really busted my butt. But now you're to answer your question, being an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, I've got all this flexibility, right? Mm-hmm. I not only created a business, I created a business that runs on its own. Yes. Right. And it's not to say that I don't work hard. I just work smart and I'm working mm-hmm. on the things that really matter. I'm doing the selling. Right. I'm doing the yes. brand building, the networking. That's my job now. I'm not required to do all the nitty gritty stuff anymore because I've trained people to do it and I've mm-hmm. set up the foundation for that. So That's for brilliant. me, I just love being an entrepreneur because I get to live my life now. I get to have a life. Go to the doctor, that, for example. I get to do congratulations. that. Congratulations. <laughs> I know how it is. Like you, you really sit down and you just. You have to put the work in. What was the scariest thing about entrepreneurship? I mean, sometimes it's the same thing as the best thing about being entrepreneurship, but like, what was it for you? To be honest, it's intimidating to be such like a young, successful entrepreneur to Mm -hmm. other people in my life. And I lost a lot of relationships choosing this path. Yeah. I lost my man, somebody I was with for 12 years. Right. He didn't support me on this entrepreneurship journey. I yeah. just started actually talking about this. I never talked about it before. But yeah, I was with somebody for 12 years and he was really against me being an entrepreneur. He wanted me to be a corporate girl. He felt that that was secure. He felt he didn't want a girl that was all out there and just knew that if I had if I'd start this, that I'd probably be successful. And it really scared him. And so he kind of kicked the curb because of that. And I moved yeah. out of the house and even like my best friends from childhood like they can't handle it they can't handle seeing me being so successful being so different really and a lot of them stopped talking to me yeah so I lost like some of my best friends I lost my ex-boyfriend I have a new boyfriend thankfully but yeah like people can't handle it and and the only people that could handle it were like my direct family because I feel like those are the people who actually like really really love you well, well they saw you at, at your lowest they saw you at your highest they saw you in the middle you know and that shows what good friends a good family is exactly so yeah not everybody could handle it so I think the hardest part of entrepreneurship is how lonely it can get to be honest yeah. and, and also people not understanding it. Even if they could accept the saying like, oh, you're doing it great. I support you, but not fully understanding. A lot of people who are entrepreneurs won't have yeah. this problem because I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm also like in the limelight. And mm-hmm. a lot of people can't handle that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can't handle me being like a normal girl. And then all of a sudden having hundreds of thousands of followers and yeah. people when we're out, mm-hmm. everybody making a big deal about what I do or asking me questions, giving me a lot of attention. People get jealous. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And so for me, it was more of a unique situation than I think most entrepreneurs would encounter. Yeah. So I don't want to discourage anyone. <laughs> no, entrepreneurship is definitely fun. And you know, and another thing I always like to ask people is what is the most important thing that you carry with you all the time being an entrepreneur? Like a physical. It could be physical. It could be metaphysical. It could be like, what do you carry with you as an entrepreneur th- through life to make sure that you stay sound pretty much? Confidence yeah. is the thing that I like to carry with me. I feel like that just carries me through. And I had Ed Milet on my show and he told me his definition of confidence is keeping the promises that you give to yourself. Mm -hmm. So being accountable to the things that you want to achieve, keeping your promises to yourself. That's what self-confidence is. And so for me, I feel like I'm very accountable to myself. I feel like if ever I say I'm going to do something, I actually do it. And I don't need, Mm -hmm. you know, a manager or somebody to hold me accountable. I hold myself accountable. That makes me confident. That makes me enter the room with a great vibration, with a great light to me. People feel attracted to me. And then I can accomplish anything. I feel like when you get along with people and have good vibes with people, you can get a lot accomplished. There you go. So, Hala, where can people find? Where's where? Is, I guess the sweet spot is LinkedIn. The best way to find me would be my podcast. It's called the Young oh, and right. Profiting Podcast. So it's on all the different apps. I've interviewed people like Deepak Chopra, Matthew McConaughey, wow. Ed Milet, Seth Godin, Dave Asprey. Um, it's an amazing show. I interview the brightest minds in the world. We talk about everything from sales, negotiation, entrepreneurship, side hustles. It's such a great show. It's called Young it's and Profiting. I really enjoy it. I I discovered it earlier this year mm. and i've binged it it's 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 binge worthy it really is it's approachable it's an hour long show sometimes but it's great your keynote that you did at the mit what was the mit 
Gathering of Titans. Yeah, it's, Gathering uh, of Titans. It's where Simon Sinek got his big break. So that was my that's first speaking engagement, and that's Simon Sinek's first speaking engagement. That was your so. first speaking engagement. Wow. Yeah, that's my first one. First that's like all- real one, you know, other than yeah. like speaking at like my college or something. But that's yeah, so big. But that, that this is big for your debut on the speaking circuit. So you think that's gonna be a future? You're gonna do some public speaking for people and stuff. Yeah, I've already got a bunch lined up, so I imagine oh, doing exciting. a TED Talk one day, you know, oh, releasing fun, yeah. a book. And I can say, I talked stuff. to her w- once. It'd be awesome. <laughs> I knew her when she was already successful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks, Seth. Valhalla, thank you so much for being on the show. I'll have the links to everything. I think you have the longest list of places to find you in my show notes as anyone <laughs> on here. So more than some, oh, uh, some other people. So I'll have all the links in the show notes. And thanks for being on. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is part of the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. Another great MPN podcast you'll enjoy is PR Talk, a show that digs into the modern side of public relations through interviews with thought leaders, authors, and the media on PR Talk with the Marketing Podcast Network. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.